There's so many videos on color mixing, I honestly don't know if I can give you more than what's already out there. And yet, I got questions about color constantly. What colors do you use? Which color go well together? Why is my color dirty? Why is my color dirty? Why is my color dirty? So let me see if I can help you with that today. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Watercolor without color is just water. So unless you are doing a value study, which is still important, check out my last video, you will want to know how to mix good colors. That being said, I never want to go too technical on things. I want to provide you something practical that you can apply almost immediately. So let's talk about some practical ways for you to make some nice colors for your paintings. Number one, consistent wash and mixture. Dirty colors, muddy colors don't come from the color itself most of the time. It might be because of your wash lack consistency. When you paint a wall with a consistent layer of white, it's a white wall. But if you don't have consistent paint, it looks like a stain. And there's nothing wrong with the paint itself, but the way you apply the paint on the wall. And it doesn't matter what color, even brown or gray, it can still look good if you apply them right. The same thing goes for watercolor. A consistent, clean wash is the key to a nice, vibrant painting. If your wash is not clean and your mixture is too watery without enough paint, your painting is going to look dirty. Doesn't matter what color you use. Number two color is light. Take a white paper out on a sunny day or a cloudy day under indoor light or just different lighting scenario. That white is going to look different. The lighting plays a huge role in color. You need to train your eyes to see and train your mind to analyze. If you compare the same white building in the broad daylight and in the sunset, the color look vastly different, but the color of the building never changed. The light changes the color we see. So study and think about the lighting your subject is in. What color is the directional light and what color is the ambient light? This is the type of of study Monet has done and what you and I should aspire to. Number three, think of warm and cool rather than specific color. Color is a spectrum. We paint watercolor, not a wall. So don't think about swatches and specific color when you mix your colors. What I like to do is to start my color with a neutral gray, and I start to shift the balance between warm and cool from there. This is probably the easiest way to have a harmonious color in your painting. Because they are from the same base color, you are not mixing separate colors for different swatches. You are mixing warm and cool variations of the colors. And because they are all from the same starting point, the color will work well together. Okay, as always, we will apply what we learn in a painting. It is important for me to put things in context for you to see. Talk the talk, paint the paint. Before we start, give this video a like if you want more content like these. Consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out my future video. So I'm going to paint this scenery from Greece, but here's the kicker. I'm going to paint the same scenery twice one in the afternoon lighting and one in an post-sunset sort of an evening lighting. I believe this is a great way to compare lighting and color because it's essentially the same subject. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I skipped the drawing in this video because it's not the point of the video and I want to move into painting rather quickly. So here's a value study I did for this image. I found the value study quite helpful because this is somewhat of a complicated scenery. Even though the colors are pretty simple, the structure of the buildings are all over the place. So doing a value study helped me to group a value and simplify the subject a little bit. So I'll be starting by pre-wetting the paper with a sponge. I will start with the afternoon one. So I wet it pretty much all over the place except certain areas where I want the highlight to be, like the light side of the buildings. Now I'm going to pre-mix some colors to paint some warm light, even though the building is white. Under the sunlight, the sunlight is warm, so give it a little bit of the warmth in some of the area. 
And I also pre-mix the color for the sky. And as you do the wash down, overlap your brush stroke a little bit to get some smooth transition. You want a nice clean wash. Remember what we said, clean color come from clean washes. So make sure you use a nice big brush, have plenty of mixtures and really do a nice gradation down. And now I mix a deeper, slightly greener blue, a warmer blue for the ocean. A little bit thicker mixture. You don't want to be as watery because I want a little bit of definition for the ocean line. I paint that while it is still wet so it will fuzz a little bit. So it's going to have a slightly soft edge just like the one in our photo. So the wash for the sky is done. I'm going to let it dry and start to work on the sunset one. So same thing, I wet the painting. And for this one, I'm going to start my first wash with the building because the building is actually the lightest thing in the scenery. And even though it is the lightest thing, it is not pure white because the sun is set. So our main light source is the sky, which is really warm, nice warm pink sky. And the ambience is quite cool as well inside the shadow area. So we got this warm color on top and cool on the bottom. So I did an overall wash for the building itself and I let it dry and I come back to the afternoon scenery. Now we're going to paint the shadow side of the buildings and I'm going to mix a variety of warm and cool darker tones for the building. So we start with the windmill. Because it is a cylindrical shape, we want a little bit of transition from dark to light. So I'm using a damp clean brush to soften the edge. And we'll continue the wash down and try to connect all of the shadow shape on the building. We'll skip around some of the highlight like the umbrella and some light side of the building. But the key is to connect as much as possible. And while we're connecting the shape, we'll paint with a variety of different grays that we had. So some may be a little bit more purple, some may be a little bit warmer, but it's mostly cool color and a variety of bluish gray because the sky is blue. So even though there are parts of the building in the shadow, they still receive the skylight, which is blue. So during a sunny day, this shadow area is usually cooler color. Keep it loose and simple. Don't worry about the detail. That's why I did a value study. And this painting is mostly for exercise anyways. It's not really for a big refined finished painting. So just kind of have fun with it. Play with the color. Now the second wash is done. We'll wait for it to dry and move back to the sunset one. And I'll start to mix the gradation on my palette. And notice with each new color, I use a little bit of color that I already have to mix my next color so that every single color is related to the color that I already have. That will make a nice natural transition. So after I put the wash down, I notice my sky isn't dark enough, isn't intense enough. But I already started the wash, so I decided to just finish the wash and I can come back and glaze it later. I don't want to disturb the wash. Keep the wash clean. That is still very, very important. And the ocean is the same thing. I want a nice soft edge. So I mix a drier, more intense color. It's more of a cool blue, more towards the violet rather than green. So different from the daytime one. While I'm on my second wash, I mix a darker warm gray color. Use the exist color that I have on my palette, just adding a little bit warmer colors. And I just starting to paint some dark shadows in the building. So places like the balconies, things under the roof, the door, the windows, places like that. This evening lighting is actually quite flat because there's no directional light source, which is the sun. The sun is actually under the horizon already. So our only light source is the skylight. 
So the lighting is almost 100% ambient light. So the value changes in the buildings are very subtle. So now we're back to the afternoon lighting. And now we're starting to make some nice warm dark gray. The third wash is mostly just to give it some dark punches. So we start with the roof. Get a nice clean wash in. Do a little bit of wet on wet just to give it a little bit of volume. And the roof is casting a little bit of shadow here. And then we start to go really dark and paint the window. Inside the window is almost completely dark. So the doorway and some of the recessed details on the building. So we start to paint windmill. It's kind of like a rusty red color. So we just add the red and colors like burnt sienna into our existing gray color. So like what I mentioned, we are mixing a different variety of grays. Just because we're introducing a new color doesn't mean we start from scratch. Use what you already have on your palette. Adding some dark and the windmill. Get a little bit of a shadow side there. And I decided to add a little bit of the warmth next to the windmill because the windmill should bounce off some nice red colors. So even though it's pretty faint, we just add a little bit more suggestion of the lighting. And now we're painting some dark areas in the balcony under the roof. These are pretty dark compared to the dark side of the building because they're pretty much inside so they don't get any sunlight and they get even less ambient light. So adding these little dark details just going to make the painting look a little bit more complete. Finishing up the roof on the right here. And painting around the umbrella, we want to keep that highlight. And I noticed the sky is again kind of weak but also the camera is washing out the colors. So once we finish the painting, I actually come back and glaze over the sky again to make it a little bit more intense. That actually helped quite a bit. So I'm adding a little bit more detail here and there. In this stage, it's very easy to just suck in and start to do a lot of details because there's actually so much detail in the picture. Again, even though the color is really simple, there's an enormous amount of details, architectural details in this photo. So I try to keep it loose. Now time to come back to the evening light again. So again, the third wash is the dark. So here we're painting the roof again, but notice how much warmer it is because the Local color is sort of this gray warm color already. But on top of that, we are adding more colors from the sky. So it is actually quite a bit darker and also redder than the daytime one. So again, thicker make sure when you are painting dark, especially when you're painting dark, you don't want a very watery mixture. You don't want to paint with dirty water. So this is the stage you really want to watch your mixture. Quite a few students have this problem. They don't have the confidence to paint with thicker mixture. So they paint with a lot of watery mixture. And the result is too many layers. And then actually stuff showing underneath. So the wash start to become very, very dirty because it's not covering enough underneath painting and you are showing a lot of different values all over the place and the whole scene become very dirty. So avoid doing that. Make sure you mix enough mixtures. The sky is really bugging me as I'm looking at the replay right now. I mean, the sky is really just too weak, but I'm trying to finish up the dark details on the building first, and then I'll come back and glaze over again. And I'm trying to learn to do things right in the first time, but sometimes I still don't mix enough paint and result in a very weak wash. So I still make that mistake myself. Fortunately, I am able to mix a darker mixture after it's completely dry and to glaze to intensify the sky.
you do want to make sure it's completely dry though otherwise if you melt other paint it's going to become very dirty so i'm pretty much mixing the same color just a little bit less watery but at the same time because we already have a water underneath so doing a glazing is going to intensify those color a little bit I also carry over the glaze onto the building just a little bit so I can start to darken some of the buildings. They are a little bit too bright. It is an evening lighting so the building shouldn't be that bright. So while at it, I'm mixing some really dark gray, really dark warm gray to give it just a little bit more value here and there. But I'm used mostly leftover colors. Maybe I'll add a little bit of neutral tint or ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, something like that. But I'm used mostly leftover colors to do the job. But again, they are from the same base color that I have. So no matter what color I use, it's not going to look too off and too awkward. It's still going to feel like it's belong to the same painting. So I'm trying to add some darker values here and there very subtly because all I'm trying to hint are some ambient shadows when there's less ambient light going into some corners, some places behind other buildings, some places under the roof and things like that. So just very subtle stuff. I'm adding those just so that this evening scenery can look a little bit more complete. Personally, I rarely choose this type of lighting because there's very little contrast and the lighting is actually not really helping to describe the structure and the form. But it is a fun painting just trying to mix different variety of colors which is the point of this video. It's all about the color and their relationship with the lighting. So even though it's just white building, under different lighting, they have very different color. And here is the finished painting. The final photo shows the color a little bit better. And I also went back and glazed over the blue sky to make it a little bit more intense. That makes the painting look a little bit better. So that was interesting for sure. And again, the focus of this exercise is the color and lighting. So both painting are very loose, but I certainly hope it is helpful for you. My watercolor essential course goes into depth about color mixing. Check it out if you are interested. I put the link down below. That being said, the core concept is always the same. Train your eyes and your mind. If you like this video, please like and consider subscribe to my channel. If you haven't do so, sign up to get my fast track watercolor PDF guide. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.